Pride Week and drag queens on college campuses. Interesting concept. Trigger warning. The story this young woman is about to tell you is genuinely upsetting. I recall going to class during Pride Week and I got into the elevator of a really old building to go up to my class and all of a sudden three Pride drag queens got in the elevator. They happened to be going to the same floor as me. So now you see why I issued the trigger warning because yeah, it's bad. <laughs> And I remember feeling super uncomfortable and really confused. I was really confused because I was trying to go to a class that I paid for that was gonna help me in my future. And then all of a sudden I have sexuality being thrown in my face. And I'm like, wait, this isn't related to education. What's going on? I completely know what she's talking about. I know exactly what she's talking about. And I would have been just as confused. In fact, just the other day, I had pretty much the exact same thing happen to me. I was at the store getting groceries and I was in line to pay for my groceries. And all of the sudden out of nowhere, three, Mexican looking people got in line behind me and I was like, and I was so confused. I was so confused because I was like, wait, I'm not Mexican and they're Mexican. And I was like, wait, I thought I was here to get groceries. Like what, is, what does being Mexican have to do with getting groceries? And I'm not saying I was uncomfortable with a drag queen. Like I, that's fine if someone wants to do that. But when it's brought to a college campus, which is a place of education, that's when it's wrong. No, 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 exactly, exactly. I wasn't uncomfortable with them being Mexican. You can be Mexican if you want, that's fine. It's just that when they're doing it in a place that I also am, that's when it's wrong. And it makes me uncomfortable that I didn't go to a drag show to see that, but it was just brought and shoved in my face on my college campus. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. Like, I didn't go to Mexico to see Mexican people. I just went to the grocery store, right? Like, I wasn't, I wasn't seeking it out. They came into where I was and they were just there. And that's not fair to me. All right, so I'm gonna drop the bit here. Uh, so did you see how the story that I was telling made me look like an objectively terrible person who's definitely racist and a bigot? Yeah, so that's the same story. I was just telling the exact same story as you. And I know you're like, no, my story is different because I was being bigoted toward a different group of people, but it, it's the same story. It's the exact same story. And right now, your video that you made is getting ratioed so hard. And I know that you're really gonna wanna lean in to a victim complex here. I know that you're gonna wanna lean in to the idea that you're being bullied somehow for your beliefs or for expressing an opinion. And I just wanna be really, really clear with you that that's not what's happening. You went on the internet and showed yourself to be a bigot and people came into your comments and said, you're a bigot and that's all that happened. And I know that you're a literal child and that you're at most 20 years old, but that's why we need to catch this and bottle it up and use it as a teachable moment, okay? Don't do this. Don't be this way. Don't think this way. Whoever taught you to be this way, open up that part of your brain and just dump it out and knock it off right now. Because they gave you some bad info and they taught you to be a bad person and it's not working for you and it's going to continue to not work for you as you get older. Like today, the social consequence that you're facing is getting ratioed and having old farts like me dunk on you on the internet. But tomorrow, the social consequence that you could face for being a bigot could be a lot heavier. You could lose your job. You could lose friends or potentially have family members that no longer want to be around you. That video you made was bad. Those feelings that you had upon seeing people who were different than you occupying a space that you felt like they shouldn't be allowed to occupy, those feelings were bad. And I think on some level, you know this. I think the reason why you say this... And I'm not saying I was uncomfortable with a drag queen. Like, I, that's fine if someone wants to do that. Is because you don't want other people thinking of you as a bigot, and you don't want to think of yourself as a bigot. That's not who you want to be, but I'm letting you know that the fact that you made this video means that right now, that's who you are. But it's not who you always have to be. You can fix that, so do it now, please. Okay, bye! And I know that you're really going to want to lean in to a victim complex here. I know that you're going to want to lean in to the idea that you're being bullied. Oh, sweet baby Austin. Shush, 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 shush. It's too late. She already went and did this. 
I've seen a lot of comments and videos about my speech impediment and my, strangely enough, eyebrows in the last 24 hours. So listen, I noticed Olivia's speech impediment when I first watched her video, and I didn't comment on it at all when I made my response video to her. And the reason I didn't comment on it is because it's not a necessary thing to comment on to make my argument. It's not a relevant thing to comment on. It's not a cool thing to comment on. I personally find Olivia's open bigotry and ignorance way more embarrassing and cringy than her speech impediment ever could be. And maybe you're a person out there who thinks, well, I don't really care about her feelings. I'll make fun of her speech impediment if I want to. She's a bigot. And you're right, she is a bigot. But it's also important to remember that there are people who agree with you, people who are on your same ideological team, people who aren't bigots, who also have speech impediments. And it's important to remember that a speech impediment is in no way a character flaw. It's not in any way something that is worthy of mentioning and certainly not something that is worthy of ridiculing. So if you're one of those people who chose to make fun of Olivia's eyebrows or her speech impediment, don't do that. Knock that off. Stop it. But also, Olivia, don't do this. Knock this off. Stop this. There's always going to be someone or hundreds of people who say something negative about you because you know what? They can't attack the content of your argument or your videos. At the time that I'm recording this, your original video, the video in question, has close to 16,000 comments on it. I spent five whole ass minutes of my day scrolling through those comments because I'm a full-time content creator and I chose to spend five minutes of my day doing that. And I did not find a single comment making fun of your speech impediment or your eyebrows. Now I'm not calling you a liar. I believe you that those things definitely happened. I make my living on the internet. I know how terrible people on the internet can be. I'm just pointing out that the vast majority of people who responded to you in your comments and the vast majority of people who chose to make response videos to your video made no mention of your speech impediment or your eyebrows. The overwhelming majority of people who decided to respond to you offered you valid criticism, valid feedback, and valid arguments as to why what you said in your video was ignorant and wrong. And now you're out here acting like all of those people, those thousands of people with their very valid criticism and very valid feedback simply don't exist because a small handful of those people decided to resort to unnecessary ad hominem attacks about your disability. Like, genuinely, take my hand and stroll down this path with me. Imagine that I made a video where I told some inane, ignorant story, and that story caused tens of thousands of people to respond to me with comments and response videos. And let's say that 98% of those people were offering me very valid criticisms and very valid arguments as to why what I said in my video wasn't okay. But let's say that like a hundred of those people, that's substantial, a hundred people, let's say that a hundred of them were like, look at this guy's stupid mustache and his ugly face, why would I listen to this guy? Wouldn't I then be just the silliest of geese if I chose to pretend that the thousands of people offering me valid criticism no longer existed because a small handful of people chose to be needlessly cruel? I would, right? I'd be a little silly goose for that, right? So, you know, uh, stop it and grow up and knock it off you little goofball, okay? <laughs> All right. You're not getting bullied. You're picking a fight, then losing that fight. You are not the victim.